we knew we were going to have one gentleman for sure that was coming in. We have two here this morning. This is a momentous occasion. Uh, uh, call it an honor. I'd have to say because he is the best-looking 60-year-old man I've ever seen in my life. It's his birthday today. Yes. So we first want to welcome our friend Sean Wayans, yeah. who's been here on yeah. many occasions. And his brother, Keenan Ivory yeah. Wayans, is here. Oh. This is how you do it. This is how you do it, man. <laughs> Welcome to Philadelphia. Yeah, well, now all the women in my family are going to kill you because you said my age. Oh. <laughs> and they all lie about theirs. So ah. <laughs> you were working as a stand-up when you met Robert Townsend, correct? Yeah, well, yeah. when I met Robert and Eddie and all of us, we all started out at the same time and um, in the club in New York at the Improv. Yeah. And that's sort of how we, you know, started working together. And you... you I believe, if the legend is correct, that you are one of the writers or co-writers on Raw, correct? Yeah, on Raw. I, I uh, worked on that with Eddie. I, I also produced it, and Robert directed it. I remember that day. <laughs> oh, there's a pic- there was I a was picture. Put the picture back, back there. up. Yeah. I was back there with you guys, right? And oh, I, was yeah. play- I was slap boxing with Eddie, and I almost hit him, and then security grabbed me. and was like, all right. <laughs> oh. All right, Junior, you, <laughs> you're about to mess up this money. Go sit your ass down. <laughs> Wow. So that, that, I mean, that's cool. But all, all you guys have had a um, such a, a massive effect on comedy and, and a, a type of comedy that I love, we all love, uh, that, that is, uh, you helped usher it in. Eddie Murphy did as well. What happened in my career was I started out, you know, sort of by myself. Yeah. And then as my family started getting into the business, I kind of realized that, it was either going to be all of us or one, so I decided to make it about all of us. So I kind of stepped away from acting and started to cultivate. Just, yeah, so, exactly. And and Sean, we, we were talking er, 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 earlier about how you you were first on the on the show as as the DJ. Yeah, and you you'd also you'd already been doing comedy. You're doing stuff like that. But so from your point, Keenan, as you're seeing family member after family member. I want to do this. I want to do this. Mm-hmm. Uh, is it a double-edged sword, or, or you know, ha- what what do you first say to them when they come to you and they say you as sort of the, you know, default patriarch? I want to right. do this. He nurtured us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My my thing with them is was as long as you're willing to work, I I always wanted them to know that it wasn't easy, and I never, I would give them small opportunities in the beginning. I never gave anyone a starring role right, who right. wasn't ready and you know I, like I said I made sure that they all put in their work and you know it's it is it, the fact that they're um where they are yeah. in their careers now is testament to the everybody fact that yeah. they you know, they came in the right way. Right. Did anybody but, ever get mad at you saying, hey, I'm ready for my yeah. starring role? <laughs> Always. <laughs> Always. Yeah. When, when Damon first started. <laughs> I was the DJ, man. <laughs> <laughs> and you were a damn good DJ. I could, a sketch, I could play sketches too, and yeah. scratch. Yeah. Hey, the guy right behind you is really talented. <laughs> right. Well, when Damon, when Damon first started, I told him, I said, give yourself 10 years. Yeah. And he looked at me like I was insane. <laughs> you know, and he was like, it's going to take me 10 years. <laughs> Well, ten years later, he was, yeah. he and say, was ready. We say the same. I I tell like the interns and 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 people who are coming up in in the radio business, and, and now we've been you know it's the twentieth anniversary of the show, uh, and and I and I say trust me, just, if you were to jump five years into the future and look back, you wouldn't believe where you were or how things have changed. Yeah. So that's very sage advice. But when you're young and hungry, yeah, right, it's hard to perceive be. that. It is, and you know the thing is youth. You know, youth is something that people think everything is supposed to happen when you're young. Right. And they're disappointed if it doesn't because youth is when, you know, you you make the money, you chase the girls. you do. Yeah. That's the experience that everybody wants as opposed to being great at what you do. Yeah. And being great at what you do takes a lot more time than that. And sometimes, you know, youth passes you by. And I, I, I tell people all the time, if, if your goal is to be a CEO of a company, it doesn't matter if it happens at 20 or 60. Yeah. Right. You still accomplish your goal. Yeah. All right. So uh, you have to be a really good talent scout, right? So uh, yeah. within Living Color, were you the, the sole decision maker as far as who was on the cast and who wasn't? Yeah. All right, so it was just because you did an amazing job with that, and you did, you know look at the, like all of the people that came out of there. Well, they were all they were all people that 
I knew. That you knew. Right? So we were all in the clubs together. Okay. So when I got an opportunity, it was like, who's the funniest guys I know? Like, I it mean, wasn't really like a, a, a hard thing to do because I knew they were funny. You were you working know? with people like Jim yeah. Carrey and, and, and all yeah. those all those guys were were, were yeah. paying their dues. And he knew what to do with them. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And but yeah. that's that's a key. That that is a gift. There's there's you know, Lauren Michaels has that mm -hmm. that that ability and, and also who's gonna synergize well with each yeah. other. But you also your show aired at eight o'clock on Sunday and you know, so so you had a younger audience in, yes. in myself. Right. And I mean I just I, I I loved it. You know what I mean? Like Ace Ventura <laughs> came out. I was like all over yeah. that. And like, it got moved to eight. Started at this nine. Started, started, started at nine. nine. Yeah. What yeah. A, uh, Parker Lewis can't lose. Uh, was that the, your, your lead? <laughs> you know, the, the Ferris like Bueller ripoff. Yeah. <laughs> I yeah. love that yeah. show Fox, too. Yeah. Fox wanted to. They wanted to make it an anchor show. Okay. So they moved us to eight. Okay. Did they initially, or did because uh, when it first really because it, it kind of hit the ground running, I, if my memory yeah. was, and did they go whoa? -oh, we need to bump this up. Yeah, well, initially, they were very, you know, very afraid of the show, yeah. period. Like, they had no idea <laughs> they what, were you know, what, what was going to happen. But right. once once the show was successful, then it was like, you know, every network strategy is going to be how many other shows can we launch. Right. So, you know, they, they ended up moving us. In know. this day and age of reboots, uh, we're yeah. seeing TV shows rebooted. What, what's, what's the likelihood? We don't have a good sketch show. You know, SNL's the only thing going right now, as far well, as I, I know. I think there's absolutely a new generation. Yeah. Um, so it, it would just, I, I don't think that the the guys from the past would step forward, yeah. Yeah, want to do that again. But there's absolutely, you know, a new generation out there, and it would be fun. Yeah. You know, we're in, we're in a, a time now where I think a show like In Living Color is needed, but. At the same time, it's you know the sensitivity. Can you do it? Yeah. No, Can that's a good question. We we were wondering yeah. about that about yeah. about the you know President and I were having a talk earlier about you know the, the, like the the comedy club or the the theater. When you guys are there, that's your realm, and all bets are off. You, yep. you should, should be allowed. Be, yeah, yeah. There, there, you right. know, there's some there's safe spaces yeah. for satire and and comedy and thought provoking and whatever you want to do. That's your yeah. that's your palette. And it's and like there's well, there's the, been you, there's been hits on it lately. It's the phone. Yeah. It's yeah. it you see because Absolutely. the people who are in the club, yep. they paid to be there and they wanna see it. Yeah. But people who are filming, now it's going to people who didn't want to see it. You're and right. then when they do see it, now they're they're pissed. It's yep. never the people who were in That's the why club. I didn't want to go. See that? <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right. Well speaking of that, some some yeah. even some rock bands have adopted no yeah, I, no phone. I, I don't think phones yeah, should get be out of here. I, I yeah. think you're there for the experience and enjoy the experience. And well, Kevin Hart it. played the link, you know, mm -hmm. the the stadium here, and there was a no phone rule for that yeah. whole show. It can be done. It's a pain in the ass, but I mean, I I would agree. Yes, with that. you lift 100%. a clip out, you lift a sound bite out out of context, yeah, yeah. and people are gonna go a yeah, it's it's yeah. crazy. I heard somebody, um, and I don't remember who the performer was, saying recently though that they, um, it's really easy to see from the stage when somebody does get on their phone. Have you guys noticed that? Like if you're out. Up on stage, you can tell immediately. If the light is on. Yeah. 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 You can tell, but you just don't want to stop. You, you got to understand, yeah. you, you got people in the palm of your hand. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you, you, you got momentum going. Right. And you're thinking about your next thing, and you're trying to be physical, and you're trying to be in the moment, and then someone has their phone up. Do you stop your whole show to deal with this guy with his phone up? And it, then it's kill the people's No, show. you're right. right. So you, you're going to ruin it for other people. Yeah, yeah so, no. You know. It, it makes total sense. Sometimes um, you do, and you make him part of the show, and you <laughs> destroy him for being the idiot. Yeah, which is also the phone good. out. But yeah. you channel your Richard Pryor. Yeah, thing. if I gotta stop, I'm gonna destroy you. Keenan, I have to tell you that uh, I'm gonna get you, sucker. Is one of the my absolute favorite movies. Thank you. Hilarious. I think I think uh, people need to revisit it, but it's, I think it's also sort of it's a, it's it's the likely. First step to getting to "Don't Be a Menace," which yes. you know that same sort of of comedy, uh, which which has became the style of comedy. When yeah. you were putting that together, how 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 difficult was that to pull? Everybody had a lot of you know uh, cameos and stuff. How, how well, give us the idea of what that production was like? I was very lucky. I was very lucky, and um, Jim Brown really. <laughs> um, he and Bernie Casey, once they came on... That then, got it done? That got it done. Uh, then everybody else was like, well, if they'll do it. And They were essential. Yeah. They, they, were, they, were, yeah. they were what Leslie they Nielsen were the, was. The, yes, they yeah. were the icons of the era. And 
So once once I was able to bring them on board, it, it, it went really smooth. And it really was, it, it was an homage to them. So and the black, those, and black yeah, exploitation right, movies of the those 70s. Those are the movies I grew up watching, and, and so did I. I they were enjoyed awesome. them. Yeah. So, you know, when I was writing it, I was writing it affectionately. So that's why I think that they responded to it. And then these guys did the same thing for their generation with Don't Be a Menace. Right? Yeah. So, so I was on the set of the, uh, I'm going to Get You Sucker, 17 year old boy watching his big brother do his thing and just taking it all in and going, man, one day. I want to do a movie just like this. Yeah, and you did. A couple yeah. years later. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Don't Be a Menace was born. It's uh, Sean and Keenan Ivory Wayne's here, and we want to do something special because it's a special day, and we have something to bring out. Uh, oh. For Keenan, it is his birthday today, so <laughs> we got a cake birthday. for you, Keenan. Yes. You. He don't eat cake, though. No. I know. <laughs> I don't, but I, I appreciate the seven candles. <laughs> it's my seventh birthday. There you go. Uh, so you can blow out the candles and there it is. 